really, really love this book. It's so, so good. So if you don't know what Harry Potter is about, somebody's trying to murder Vicky. <laughs> I found somebody. I say you don't cross my mind. Hello people of the YouTube world and all who are watching this, I am Mackenzie901k and in today's video we are going to be going over my fall book recommendations. <laughs> so we have a few categories. First category we have is fantasy, my biggest category. Second category we have are romance books. Then we have murder mystery and then we have some graphic novels slash manga recommendations as well. I'm going to try to keep this video pretty short short because there are a lot of books over here so without any further ado let's get right on into the video. The first book recommendation I have for you guys is These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. I really enjoyed this series. Colors on this cover are really why I wanted to put this on my book recommendation for fall but this book follows a girl. What's her name? I think her name is Brie. So in this book we follow our main character Brie. Brie has a sister. One day Bree's sister gets sold to the Fae. So Bree is going to go into this court and get her back. So this book follows the journey of her going and getting her sister back and her experience in the Fae firsthand. Like I said, I really did enjoy this book and it gave me Akatar vibes. Now at the time I read this book, I did not read Akatar, but everybody compares it to Akatar. I don't think it's exactly like it now that I've like read A Court of Thorns and Roses and read this. But if you were looking for a book with that similar vibe, this is my recommendation. There's a love triangle sort of kind of going on in here as well. I really want to pick this series back up and read it again because I love the second book in this series so so much more than I love this one. This is a duology. There's only two books so I feel like that would be just a perfect fun little fall read if you are planning on reading a bigger series like Throne of Glass or something like that. It's a really good short series that you can read if you want to sit down and binge a book. So the next book is sort Sorcery of Thorn by Margaret Rogerson. This book is a really, really good book as well. I read this book last year in the springtime. I really wish I kind of would have saved this one for the fall. This book is kind of dark. It's got like a dark description, a dark world. So pretty much this book follows Elizabeth. Elizabeth lives in this magical library with these books that can come to life. Um, and if the books do come to life, they're pretty deadly. So one night she hears kind of this ruckus going on and she gets up to investigate and she finds like the head of the library dead and she looks guilty for it because she's caught holding the sword that killed her or at least that's the way it looks. So she is supposed to be like arrested and taken off but instead she teams up with a sorcerer named Nathaniel Thorne and she is trying to figure out or prove her innocence. It's more on the cozier side. It is a standalone. There is also a little novella that you could read that talks about Nathaniel and her relationship post what happens in this book. I did really enjoy this book overall and I think it is a perfect addition to your fall TBR. The second book is also a Margaret Rogerson book. This book I read a little bit more recently and that is Enchantment of Raven. This book was all vibes, no plot. <laughs> Sorcery of Thorns definitely has more plot, I feel, than in this book. This book is about a girl named Isabel, and Isabel's a painter for Faye. So she is hired to paint one of the Faye princes, and she paints sorrow in his eyes. Sorrow is a human emotion, and Faye are not supposed to show human emotion because that could be seen as a sign of weakness so she is supposed to be 
taken to prison to be imprisoned by him but stuff kind of takes a turn there's a lot of different magical things that are happening I did not like this book for the plot I love this book for the magical setting it was a very fall atmosphere the imagery was beautiful a lot of this book takes place in the fall court I really really love this book and it was so so good for the fall for the fall vibes the plot little iffy it's really short though I think it's a little bit less than 300 pages no it's 300 pages exactly it's not a super duper heavy book that you've really got to pay attention to it's fun for the vibes next book that I have is legend born by Tracy Dion this book is a King Arthur retelling it follows I think her name is also Brie yeah her name is also Brie Brie Matthews has had a recent tragedy her mother passed away she's kind of dealing with that grief she's always really wanted to go to this school that her mother had went to so Brie ends up going to this school stuff goes down <laughs> on the first night she witnesses a magical killing they wipe everybody's minds but when they try to wipe her mind it does not get wiped so she is stuck with the memory of this magical killing they decide to take her into this secret society it's really 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 good I love the secret society aspect of this book it also deals with racial matters so I really 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 recommend this book for fall and like I said it starts right as we are going back to school and I think that that is the perfect fall setting there's also some romance in here but this book is more plot based and it's a lot of world building and I have not read the second book this is also a duology not read the second book yet but I do plan on it this fall it's really interesting so overall I, I really think that this should go on your TBR as well <laughs> next book is Kingdom of the Wicked by Kieri Minoscalco this book was creepy <laughs> This is also another murder mystery fantasy type book. Amelia, she one day finds her sister murdered. And so she's also a witch. I forgot to mention that. Her and her sister are both witches. So she is really, really upset about her sister being murdered. So and she accidentally summons one of the seven deadly sins. So she is stuck with him to help her figure out what happened happened to her sister. This book, like I said, was really kind of creepy at times. I listened to the audiobook and the audiobook actually has one of my favorite narrators. She narrated Daughter of a Pirate King and always when I read her books that she narrates, her narration is so, so good. It was really captivating and it was a really good story. It leaves out on a cliffhanger. I'm going to warn you now. So this is a trilogy. I've not read the rest of the books in this series, but I'm just recommending that you try out the first one. I know this was a very popular book on TikTok back in the day. It was really fun and really good. The next fantasy book that I have is none other than Harry Potter. This is a classic. This book I feel like you see in most people's fall TBRs and like there's a reason. <laughs> I love reading Harry Potter in the fall. I do plan on trying to read at least one Harry Potter book this fall. I started reading Harry Potter books in the fall and it was everything that I could have ever needed. So if you don't know what Harry Potter is about, first of all, have you been living under a rock? <laughs> this is about a boy named Harry and he lives with his aunt, uncle, and cousin. I'm not gonna lie, they kind of treat him like poo-poo. And so one day a note arrives at his house stating that he is pretty much being summoned to go to this school called Hogwarts and Hogwarts is a magic school for witchcraft and wizardry and that's kind of where the story goes from there this follows three best friends Harry Hermione and Ron overall such a cute story this is a middle grade fantasy it's it's a timeless classic these Harry Potter books are so 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 good I'm really aiming to read the fourth Harry Potter book somebody hold me to it Somebody in the comments be like, listen girl, you gotta read the 
fourth Harry Potter book this fall, period. Because if nobody holds me to it, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> if you've not read it, this is your sign, read Harry Potter this fall. The next couple of books are kind of interconnected. So the first book that I'm gonna talk about is Caraval. Now, if you've been on my channel for a minute, you know that I did not really like Caraval, but hear me out, I'm still recommending it because it was still good. This follows Scarlet. So Scarlet and Tilla are sisters and ever since Scarlet was a little girl she's heard about the Caraval games and the Caraval adventures and every year she's written to the Caraval master because you can only get invited to Caraval. You can't just like go and nobody really ever knows where it's gonna be. It's kind of really mysterious. So she has written to the Caraval master every year to send her a ticket, send her away. This is what the tickets look like. She she writes one last letter because she's getting ready to get married. She's engaged and the Carval master finally responds to her, sends her a letter and she goes. Also, her sister Tella goes and Tella goes missing. Scarlet ends up having to play the Carval game to find her sister Tella. That being said, I did not like this book that much. The series gets better as it goes. So that's why I'm really recommending this book is not necessarily just for Caraval, but for the whole series. It's a three book trilogy. The first book follows Scarlet, the second book follows Tella, and the third book is a dual POV situation. Overall, this book was so fun to read in the fall. I think I read it around Thanksgiving last year, and I finished the series in December. So right around the end of fall is when I read this, and it was truly a magical experience to read in the fall. This is a completed series by Stephanie Garber, but the next book that I'm going to talk about is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. So these books are interconnected, meaning that some characters that are in this book were originally in Caraval. One of the main characters, Jax, does get introduced later on in the Caraval series. So I do recommend reading Caraval before this, even though the story plots are not really the same. But this book follows, like I said, Jax and Evangeline some stuff goes down and we're left with kind of what happens from the third book and Evangeline's crush I don't believe that they got together but her crush is getting married to her sister so she decides to strike up a deal with Jack to stop the wedding. Jack is a fate. He's the prince of hearts and she is really desperate because you never want to strike up a deal with a fate. So this follows the aftermath of her striking that deal. The second book as I'm filming this is out. The third book however should be coming out October 24th and I highly recommend that if you have not read this book yet, this is your sign to pick it up and to read it before the third book comes out because I'm holding off on the second book until October because I've heard that it ends on a big cliffhanger and I just don't want that anticipation. <laughs> so I did already order the third book and I'm really excited to read it and it's so, so good. So that's really why I'm recommending you this book is because the third one comes out in October, but still nonetheless, read this book. It's so good. <laughs> the vibes in here are like fairy tale whimsical so if that's kind of like your vibe or that vibe maybe sounds interesting to you read it the next book that I have is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross this book swept me away it was really good as I've said about pretty much every single book I've talked about so this book follows Iris Iris is a writer at this what is this place called She's a writer at the Oath Gazette and she's wanted to move up in her career but she does have a counterpart rival who also wants the same position to advance his career and his name is Roman. Also in the background of this there's a war going on and Iris's brother has been in the war so Iris decides because of a tragedy that happens she decides to quit at the Oath Gazette and and go to the front lines and write about the war. Meanwhile, she is writing to her brother on her typewriter 
and this typewriter is magical so anytime she slips it into the wardrobe the notes are supposedly supposed to be going to her brother now her brother's never written her back until one day she receives a note from who she thought was her brother but it's actually her rival Roman and we watch them fall in love through their magical typewriters that are interconnected this book also has a sequel coming out in December so I'm really really excited for that sequel and I cannot wait for it this book was beautiful it was a masterpiece I'm planning on doing a reread of this in probably November December so I do recommend that you pick this up this fall though because of the sequel ending type ordeal <laughs> coming out in December. So the next book that I'm going to recommend to you guys is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Oh my goodness this book was another masterpiece. It was everything that I wish Carlisle would have been except for I wish the romance was a little bit more in here but this is another carnival setting. So pretty much this book takes place during a carnival that just kind of randomly appears in different places no one really knows when it's coming or going and in the background of this magical carnival we have two rival magicians named Celia and Marco and they have been training for this kind of competition of sorts their whole life. The competition is honestly a bit confusing but this book is another all vibes no plot situation. It was magical, it was whimsical and it takes place during the October October, November, December season. So such a good read. I felt like I was smack dab in the middle of November in a carnival and it was amazing. All right the next book that I have to talk about is Fourth Wing. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this book because it's everywhere. Fourth Wing is a book that is based in a military academy. Pretty much what happens is Violet who pretty much her entire life has been trained to be a scribe. These scribes are supposed to you know document the war and learn about the lore. No fighting, no combat, nothing. And then one day her military mother who is some higher up in the military decides nope you're going to the writer's quadrant. So the writer's quadrant pretty much is the ones that do get involved more in the battles. They get their own dragons and that's what we follow Violet doing. She has to go through many tough challenges and she does have to get a dragon connection and overall just become this writer that she has never really wanted to be but she's doing doing it for her mother. There's also a romance in here. It's a really really good romance. Rebecca Yaros is a romance author and she herself described this book as a fantasy book for romance readers and I do 100% think that it's that. I do love this book and I'm so excited. This is also another book that is getting another counterpart second release. Iron Flame is going to be releasing in November. If you have not picked this book up, I highly recommend picking it up before November because Iron Flame is going to be so, so good. I can just feel it. Read Fourth Wing. <laughs> just that's if that's all you take from this video read this bad boy right here alrighty so the very last fantasy book that I have is Shatter Me by Tihara Moffi I'm putting it on here just because I'm kind of obsessed with Shatter Me right now and I just want to do nothing but talk about this series <laughs> this book follows Juliet and Juliet has a fatal touch so that means if she touches you bad things. She's been locked in asylums pretty much all of her life and that's where this book picks up at. So one day the reestablishment decides that they are going to take her and the reestablishment really kind of reminds me of the capital in the Hunger Games. They're in control. They want to take over this world so they want to use her as a weapon because of her deadly touch. Stuff ensues from there. Um, There is romance in this book in case you don't know <laughs> there is a very nice man in here named Aaron Warner in this book 
it's really really fun <laughs> it's a really good series each book is under 500 pages so it's really short it's really easy to get through there's six books in this series if I could go back and read this book for the first time I would I read this book in one sitting guys it was that good I could not put it down just read it read it that's all I gotta say just read it that was all of the fantasy books that I have I do have a couple romance books to talk about so we're gonna get into those as well the first book that I have is the very secret society of irregular witches this book follows a young witch named Micah Moon witches in this world are not supposed to like talk about their magic or anything like that so Micah decides that she's going to pose as a witch on some sort of social media that they have in this world and that is just such an interesting concept that she's a witch pretending to be a witch online. One day she receives this message saying that this person needs help training these three young witches to control their magic. So Micah's a little bit, or Mika, Mika Micah, she's a little bit hesitant, but she does go to Nowhere House. That's where this story kind of takes place. She does go there, she meets them, and she decides that she's going to help them with these kids and try to teach them how to control their magic and the story ensues from there there is a grumpy librarian in this book that we love it's so good it takes place during I think from October until December so perfect fall atmosphere perfect vibes and it's just it was such a fun time so cozy so cute so good and then the last romance book that I have is Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match by Sally Thorne. I picked this book up last year. This book is about Angelica Frankenstein literally making her match. So this is a Frankenstein retelling. The vibes in this book were really interesting. The banter in here was really, really cute. And it follows Angelica when she brings her creation back to life. This man, he wants to figure out out who he was before he died so that's kind of what we do throughout this book like I said so good so cozy it was such a fun read all right so moving right along next we have my thriller slash mystery books and I'm honestly pretty sure that most of these are considered mysteries so the first book that I'm going to recommend is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I bet you're thinking Mackenzie you gave this book three and a half stars last year why are you recommending this book it's good okay three and a half stars is not a bad rating despite popular belief it was a really good mystery and I really did enjoy it this book follows Avery Grahams she doesn't have a lot of money it's just her and her sister Libby and she receives this note one day stating that she needs to be present at a will reading for a guy that she has no idea who he is. So she goes and she learns that she has inherited billions of dollars, a company, a house, <laughs> everything from a guy that she doesn't even know. But the only catch is she has to live in the house with these people who um, don't like her because she took their inheritance, pretty much. They were left with very, very little and they are pissed. So this book kind of follows what happens. There's a mystery behind it. She's trying to figure out why she inherited this much money, things like that. So if you haven't read it, read it. The next book that I have is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This book is about a girl named Stevie Bell who goes to this academy named Ellingham Academy. It's in Vermont. She wants to solve the mystery that happened at the school years ago where a wife and a daughter were kidnapped and never found again. So you're going to follow dual timeline from when this kidnapping happened and from Stevie Bell trying to figure out who this is. All that was left for this kidnapping was a note signed Truly Devious. And Truly Devious is popping back up in the present timeline. She's trying to figure out what is happening and trying to put a stop to Truly Devious once and for all so no one else gets kidnapped. I read this book last fall. This is a book with a huge series. There's the original trilogy and then there is two more books after and it's it's so fun. I want to read the rest of the series. What I I remember I did really love this book. 
I think my jaw was on the floor with the plot twist that came with this book. I'm really excited for the rest of this series and I definitely think that you should add this on your fall TBR. Next up we have kind of a more recently popular book and that is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This book is supposed to be a YA criminal minds and it is. <laughs> so this book follows a girl named Cassie Hobbs. Cassie's mother was murdered years ago. The case was never solved but one day she gets appro approached by an FBI agent asking her to join the naturals and the naturals works on cold cases so she decides to join the naturals and the story goes from there in the background of this though there is some murders that are happening that are kind of in line for her mother's case so that's also an interesting point in the plot i really like this it's a group of teenagers, so it is a Y series. There's our love triangle in here, similar to the one that's in the Inheritance games. And overall, I, I'm eating this series up. I have read three books out of the four books that are in this series in a week, and it's, it's so good. And I feel like it's honestly another perfect fall read. Even though this book takes place in the summer, it's still really good. <laughs> the last book in the murder mystery genre that I have is A Good Girl's Got to Murder by Holly Jackson. So this book follows Pip and Pip is doing a capstone project for her school and in this capstone project she decides that she wants to solve the murder of Andy Bell because she does not believe that the police solved it when they said that Andy's boyfriend killed her. There's mixed media in here. There's like transcripts and things like that so it really keeps you interested i do really love the mixed media there are thrilling aspects though to this book at some points it was so good you really get to see pip form a friendship with ravi and they go sleuthing to prove Ravi's brother's innocence and this is a trilogy as well there's two more books after this I'm planning on picking up the rest of this series hopefully this fall fingers crossed because I have a lot of books that I want to read this fall and I've not read a one of them yet it was so good the last couple books that I have for you guys are a manga and a graphic novel. If you never picked one up before, I really, really think that you should pick up these two this fall. They're really good palate cleansers in between books. So that way, you know, if you want to read something but you don't want to commit to a 400-500 page book, mangas and graphic novels are normally shorter and they're fun and they have pictures. <laughs> so the manga that I'm going to recommend to you is Creepy Cat. Creepy Cat is a book following Flora. Flora moves into this house and in this house she is greeted with a creepy cat and the story just kind of follows their adventures. Honestly the way that it's told it is told in like what I would like to call a montage. It's just kind of their adventures and just kind of different things all compiled into one and from what I remember last year this book was really fun. I read this in like an hour and the art style is so so cute as well it's fun it's cute it's very interesting the very last book of the video is a graphic novel called hollow hollow is a sleepy hollow retelling with the headless horseman it's different than what I I've never read Sleepy Hollow but it's different than what I pictured when I pictured Sleepy Hollow so this book follows Izzy and Izzy is moving to this new town Sleepy Hollow <laughs> she goes to this school and everybody in this town is really kind of obsessed with Halloween and like the Sleepy Hollow thing rumors are going around that people are getting chased by the headless horseman and everybody just thinks that that's so cool like wow you're getting chased by the headless horseman and izzy's like say what now <laughs> So that's just kind of how wacky this story is. The art style is also 
so gorgeous I i'm obsessed it takes place leading up to halloween so this is a perfect read if you're wanting something right before halloween this would be perfect also it's got like a kind of a mystery aspect because vicky she's a van tassel and there are some interesting things happening to her that they are trying to figure out why this is happening and how they can stop it somebody's trying to murder vicky <laughs> It's so good. It's so cute. I highly, highly recommend this graphic novel. Alrighty guys. So that was every single book that I recommend that you guys read this fall. Um, if you guys have any more fall book recommendations that I didn't mention in this video that you really think somebody should read in the fall, comment down below. Let's chat about fall reads. I'm so, so excited. Uh, if you guys have been here for a minute, you know that fall is my favorite time time to film videos and last year I did pretty good last year filming fall videos but this year we're gonna try to make them top tier so please be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell and also give this video a thumbs up if you're excited for fall and if you click that notification bell you will be notified right when I upload a video I do upload every single Sunday but if you click that notification bell you will be one of the first ones to the party <laughs> That being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. I don't always think about you, but sometimes I do.